Please rise as you're able. Let us pray. Almighty God, look with loving mercy on your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed, to be given over to the hands of sinners, and to suffer death on the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first lesson is from Hosea. Come, let us return to the Lord, for it is he who has torn, and he will heal us. He has struck down, and he will bind us up. After two days, he he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up, that we may live before him. Let us know, let us press on to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the dawn. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. What shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? Your love is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Therefore I have hewn them by the prophets. I have killed them by the words of my mouth, and my judgment judgment goes forth as a light. For I desire steadfast love, and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is from Isaiah. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned on to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us, of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of of many and made intercession for the transgressors. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
hear the voice of Jesus. These 14 steps that you are now about to walk, you do not walk alone. I walk with you. Though you are you and I am I, yet we are truly one Christ. And therefore, my way of the cross 2,000 years ago and your way now are also one. But note this difference. My life was incomplete until I crowned it by my death. Your 14 steps will only be complete when you have crowned them by your life. Pilate's hands, I see my father's will. Though Pilate is unjust, he is the lawful governor, and he has power over me. And so the Son of God obeys. If I can bow to Pilate's rule because this is my father's will, can you refuse obedience to those whom I place over you? My Lord Jesus, obedience cost you your life. For me, it costs an act of will, and yet how hard it is for me to bend. By your grace, remove the blinders from my eyes, that I may see that it is you whom I obey in upholding legitimate authority in law. Lord, it is you. This cross, this chunk of a tree, is what my father chose for me. The crosses you must bear are largely products of your daily life. And yet, my father chose them for you also. Receive them from his hands. Take heart. I will not let your burdens grow one ounce too heavy for your strength. My Jesus, I take my daily cross. I welcome the journey of each day, even in the summer's heat and the winter's cold, in my disappointments, tensions, setbacks, and cares. Remind me often that in carrying my cross, I carry yours with you. And for bear only a sliver of your cross, you carry the full weight of mine in return. The God who made the universe and holds it in existence by his will alone becomes a man, too weak to bear a piece of timber's weight. How human in his weakness is the Son of God. I could not be your guide otherwise. If you would be like me, you also must accept your human frailties. Lord Jesus, how can I refuse? I accept my weaknesses, my irritations and my moods, my headaches and fatigue, all my defects of body, mind, and soul. Because they are real for me, these handicaps of my humanity, I will accept my limitations. Make me content to be human and give me the strength to trust in your power over my life. My mother sees me whipped. She sees me kicked and driven like a beast. She counts my every wound. But though her soul cries out in agony, no protest or complaint escapes her lips or even enters her thoughts. She shares my martyrdom, and I share hers. We hide no pain, no sorrow from each other's eyes. This is my Father's will. My Lord Jesus, I know what you are telling me. To watch the pain of those we love is harder than to bear our own. 
to carry my cross after you. I too must stand and watch the sufferings of dear ones, the heartaches, sicknesses, and grief of those I love. Allow me to believe that all things work together for good. My strength is gone. I can no longer bear the cross alone. And so the legionnaires make Simon give me aid. This Simon is like you. Give me your strength. Each time you lift some burden from another's back, you lift with your very hand the cross's awful weight that crushes me. Lord, make me realize that every time I wipe a dish, pick up an object off the floor, assist a child in some small task, or give another preference in traffic or the store, each time I feed the hungry, clothe the naked, teach the ignorant, my name is Simon. Every kindness I give to them, I really give to you. Can you be brave enough to wipe my bloody face? Where is my face, you ask? At home, whenever eyes fill with tears. At work, when tensions rise. On playgrounds, in poor neighborhoods, the courts, the hospital, the jails. Wherever suffering exists. And there, I look for you to wipe away my blood and tears. Lord, what you ask is hard. It calls for courage and self-sacrifice, and I am weak. Please give me strength. Don't let me run away because of fear. Lord, live in me and act in me. This seventh step is one that tests your will. From this fall, learn to persevere in do doing good. The time will come when all your efforts seem to fail, and you will think that you can't go on. Then turn to me, and I will give you rest. Trust me, and carry on. Give me courage, Lord. When failure presses heavily on me, and I am desolate, stretch out your hand to lift me up. I know I must not cease, but help me, Lord. Alone there is little I can do. With you, I can do anything you ask of me.
How often had I longed to take the children of Jerusalem and gather them unto me, but they refused. But now these women weep for me, and my heart mourns for their sorrows that will come. I comfort those who so seek to solace me. How gentle can you be? My Jesus, your passion is beyond compare. Lord, teach me and help me to learn. I would snap at those who hurt me. I would gossip or spread rumors at those who I disapprove of, or hinder those who intrude on my privacy. Help me to curb my tongue. Lord, make me kind. Thank you. Completely drained of strength I lie, collapsed upon the cobblestones. My body cannot move. No blows, no kicks can rouse it up. And yet, my will is mine. Know this, your body may be broken, but no force on earth and none in hell can take away your will. My Lord, I see you take a moment's rest, then rise and stagger on. So I can too, because my will is mine. When all strength is gone, and guilt is out of reproach, press me to earth, and seem to hold me fast. Protect me from the sin of Judas. Save me from despair. Lord, never let me feel that any sin of mine is greater than your love. No matter what my past has been, I can begin anew. <coughs> Behold the poorest king who ever lived. Before my creatures I stand, stripped. The cross, my deathbed, even this is not my own. Yet who has ever been so rich? Possessing nothing, I own all. If you too would own everything, let go of all that does not draw you to me. My Lord, I offer you whatever I possess and more, myself. Detach me from the craving for prestige, position, wealth. Root out of me all trace of envy of my neighbor. Release me from the vice of pride, my longing to exalt myself, and lead me to the lowest place at your feet. May I be poor in spirit, Lord, so that I can be rich in you. Can you imagine what a crucifixion is? My executioners stretch my arms. They hold my hand and wrist against the wood and press, press the nail until it stabs my flesh. Then, with one heavy hammer smash, they drive it through. 
pain bursts like a bomb in my brain. They seize the other arm, and agony explodes again. Then, raising my knees so that my feet are flat against the wood, they hammer them fast, too. My God, I look at you and think, is my soul worth so much? What can I do in return? I can only trust that in you all victory has been won for me. Allow me to participate in this journey of faith by your grace and use my life for the good of others. The cross becomes a pulpit now. Forgive them, Father. You will be with me in paradise. There is your mother. There your son. I thirst. It is complete. To speak, I have to raise myself by pressing on my wrists and feet, and every move engulfs me in new waves of agony. And then, when I have borne enough, have emptied my humanity, I let my mortal life depart. My Jesus, my God, what can I say or do? I must journey with you through death. Give me the strength to face the day when I must let my mortal life depart. The sacrifice is done. My life is complete. My mother must still cradle my lifeless body in her arms. You must part from those you love, and grief will come to you. In your bereavements, think of this. I have given my life for you. Your grief is the price of love also for those whom you must give up to death. I beg you, Lord, help me to accept the partings that must come from friends who go away, my children leaving home, and most of all, those who I love who must die. Then give me grace to say, grant them eternal joy. So ends my mortal life. But now another life begins for Mary, for Magdalene, for Peter, for John, and for you. My life's work is done. My work within and through your church must now continue. Day in, day out. From this time forth, be my apostle. My Lord Jesus, you know my spirit is as willing as my flesh is weak. Allow us to walk in pathways of love, to journey the path of the cross for the sake of others, 
May we be your hands and feet, wounded for the sake of the world you came to love. Behold the life-giving cross, on which hung the salvation of the whole world. O come, let us worship him. Behold the life-giving cross, on which was hung the salvation of the whole world. Oh, come, let us worship him. Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the salvation of the whole world. 